Greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Andrew Kirikoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the fantasy football hidden gems of week 3 of the regular season. I'm going to basically be going over where I went to collect my 6 hidden gems in order to complete my fantasy gauntlet so that I could dominate my opponents this week in fantasy football. Now before we go into doing that, I want to first of all obviously thank all of you who have subscribed, support the channel, uh, I, you know. I thank you guys every time because without you, there would be no me. That's just how it works. I love to do this, but the support continues to help me want to make more content and to get better every single week at what I do. Uh, so I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Now, other than that, I want to go over something that I probably should have mentioned earlier this week, but I want to give you guys a schedule so that those of you who are always anticipating my videos have an idea of when you can receive those videos in your YouTube inboxes for your subscriptions. So let's go into that. So the the first thing I want to go over, right? Obviously Sundays, I'm going to take my day off. I'm just going to relax. I'm going to watch football all day, okay? If something special happens, maybe perhaps I'll put out a video. But Sundays are usually going to be quiet from me. I'll probably just be answering questions in the morning, um, that are from prior videos, you know, in order just to catch up. Now on Mondays, I'm going to be doing my waiver wire video like I always do. Been going, uh, been doing this for like the last what two weeks, and basically just going to give you an idea of who performed the week one, who are the standouts, and who I believe you should be picking up on waivers. So that's that's going to be the Monday show from here on out. Okay, Tuesdays. Okay, usually on Tuesdays I do a quarterback and running back rankings, right, and starting sits. Instead, I need to break it down. I only have one video per day because it's getting a little hectic for me. So I'm going to be just doing Tuesday running backs uh, with the start and sits and the rankings. Okay, Wednesday is going to be wide receivers. Okay, all wide receiver rankings, start and sits, because I think wide receivers, running backs are majority of the questions that I receive. So I think getting them out of the way um, earlier on in the week will give you guys more time to ask questions. Um, you know, talk to each other in the comment section and then have your decision made by at least Thursday if that game is important enough. Now, you may be thinking, well, Andrew, if you're doing Thursday quarterback rankings and start and sits, then how are we going to know who to start? Don't worry. On to on Tuesday or Wednesday, at the end of the um, show, I will be mentioning people in the Thursday night game and whether I think you should be starting them, how I see them performing. So I'll kind of do a Thursday preview on like, Wednesday after the wide receivers video, just to give you a quick update on that, okay? Fridays are going to be tight end videos. Again, if the tight ends are in that Thursday game, I will mention them on Wednesday. Don't worry, okay? On Friday, right, so we have tight end rankings, and we'll also have the hidden gems like we're doing today. So we'll have two videos on Friday, okay? And then the last video of the week is going to be injury updates on Saturday. So all in all, right, we're going to have one video every day, except for Fridays in which we'll have two and Sundays in which we'll have zero. Okay, so that's basically the entire thing. Hey everybody, how's it going? We seamlessly went through that. Just to kind of give you an update, that's the update. Uh, that's the schedule. You can anticipate getting your videos in your inbox. I'm, you know, Pacific uh, Standard Time over here in California, so chances are videos will probably be uploaded around 8 p.m. So if you're east coast sorry you're getting it at 11 you know you can watch it in the morning no big deal or if you're a night owl insomniac you can go ahead and just stay up and watch the videos and enjoy it so anyway we're going over the fantasy gauntlet and as you can see on the screen right in front of you joe flacco this is this week's space stone now why have i decided to bring joe flacco my space stone okay well here's the thing joe flacco has been balling out the past two weeks right and it's, it's honestly to, to many people's surprise, to my surprise, but I did mention many times before the season began that when organizations go out and they draft a quarterback in the first round, it often lights a fire underneath the ass of the starting quarterback. We saw that with Alex Smith last year. They went and they picked up Patrick Mahomes in the first round, and he had the best season of his career thus far in Kansas City last year, right? Obviously, they didn't get too far in the playoffs. They got knocked down the first round. But that's not the big deal. We're talking about fantasy-wise. He performed. He was a top three quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. And he was absolutely good, amazing. In six-point per passing touchdown leagues, he was a top three quarterback. So 
What has Joe Flacco done in the past two weeks? 27 points in week one and six points for passing touchdowns. 21 last week in a game where, honestly, they just got outpaced in the beginning and they were just having a hell of a time trying to get back. He threw the ball 55 times last week versus the Bengals. This week, yes, they play a more difficult defense, I'd say, uh, the Denver Broncos. But to be honest, the Broncos haven't looked great on defense this year. Against the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson you know, had his way, three touchdown passes. Last week, Derek Carr, a quarterback who was absolutely just miserable against the um, the Rams defense, in which he threw three interceptions, came out last week and had 90, what, 2% plus passing completion percentage against a Denver defense. Mm, I think Joe Flacco this week is a hidden gem. For those of you who are questioning your quarterback this week, oh, should I start him? Oh, can I trust this guy into this difficult matchup? Joe Flacco, in my opinion, he's a great hidden gem, and I think he can be an extremely vital part of your team this week. He is my space stone for this hidden gem week of week three, week, week, week. Anyway, let's move on to the power stone in which I found Pierre Garçon in (laughs) San Francisco of all places. Now, the San Francisco 49ers will be playing the Kansas City Chiefs this week. I've mentioned this many times so far. And why have I done that? Well, because of the fact that Kansas City cannot stop anybody's offense, but they're going to outscore you. Now, let me read a couple stats. In the last two weeks, the Kansas City Chiefs defense have given up this many points to wide receivers, okay? Now imagine this. Now, in week one, they gave over 40 points to the wide receiver position, to Keenan Allen with 20, uh, Mike Williams with 10 and a half, and Tyrell Williams with eight. Okay, now this is in half point uh, PPR leagues. Now, last week, they gave even more points to the wide receiver position with Juju Smith with 24.6 points. Uh, Was that Antonio Brown? Man, Antonio Brown did not play well last week, but he had 17 targets. Wow. They're throwing the ball. Imagine, Juju Smith, 19 targets. I was going apeshit the other night, right? And Antonio Brown, 17 targets. They're throwing the crap out of the ball Uh, with 11.2 points. And James Washington, who played many of the snaps, but his his touchdown, you know, um, pretty much evened out his scoreline with eight points. The way I see it, if Marcus Goodwin is not healthy, yes, he's been limited in practice with that thigh injury. The way I see it, uh, Pierre Garçon, Dante Pettis, George Kittle, right? They have to step up. They're going to get blown out very early if they're not able to score, right? Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to, you know, drop back in the pocket and just hold his breath and let the ball go. I mean, honestly, he's got to be a sharpshooter and he's got to feed the ball to the best receiver on the field, who is Pierre Garcon, all things considered, especially if Marcus Goodwin's not there. I think Pierre Garcon this week can be a great hidden gem. He is my power stone of the week. And don't be afraid to play him in your flex position if you're very thin this coming week due to injuries or stuff like that. Anyway, so there's Pierre Garcon as a power stone. Let's move on. Now, I created these graphics literally two days ago. Okay, And the issue is that Latavius Murray okay, didn't have the backfield to himself two days ago. But according to the news today that Dalvin Cook is out completely this week, this makes the reality stone, reality stone that much sweeter, okay? The reality is that Latavius Murray is the only running back in the backfield, okay, that is, you know, going to produce for the Vikings this weekend against a miserable, miserable, I mean, they're so bad at defense in Buffalo, okay? He is going to absolutely run them over, okay? And we know for a fact Latavius Murray is a good running back in the NFL, right? The fact that he's a backup is unfortunate. Okay, he can he can honestly start somewhere, but chances are, uh, actually, can he start somewhere? That's a different question on its own. Let me think about this. I don't know why the Raiders got rid of them. I don't know if Marshawn was that much better of an option. But anyway, he is a good running back. Okay, the last couple weeks he hasn't done much. Okay, no big deal. It's because Dalvin Cook has been the starting running back and the franchise guy here. But let me go ahead and read some stats on how many points the Buffalo Bills have given up to the running back position in the past two weeks, okay? In week in week one, right, the Buffalo Bills gave up 10 points to Javoris Allen and uh, Kenneth Dixon 
in week one. And they also give up a touchdown and six points to Alex Collins. So all in all, they gave up, what is that, 28 points to the running back position in week one. Okay, They came back in week two, the Buffalo Bills defense, and gave up, what is this, holy moly. That's 28, 29. That's 39 points to the running back position. Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler combined for 39 fantasy points against the Buffalo Bills defense. So, all in all, what does that mean, Andrew? Well, that means that when Kirk Cousins starts to scorch this defense and they start to move the ball and Latavius Murray has to run the ball, well, he's going to have a good time. And he's going to be fantasy relevant and he's going to have a great week. I think the reality is that Latavius Murray needs to start on your team. Okay, I understand many of you are stacked, but if you are hurting and there is a Latavius Murray on the waiver wire, go for it, guys. Honestly, it's going to be a good week for Latavius Murray, okay? I'm telling you. And it's probably going to continue. If Dalvin Cook is not healthy, you have another you know, starting running back for next week. All in all, I think it's a great pickup. It's a great start this week. All right, the time stone. Okay, last week's time stone is continuing to be relevant, okay? I talked about Coy Clement last week. Imagine this. Jay Ajayi and Darren Sproles are both out. So for those of you who have picked up Corey Clement, hang loose, feels good, right? Honestly. There you go. There's your running back. Ha- have fun. But here it is. It's Sony Michelle this week. It's time. Okay? It's time for him to take over this backfield. All right? I- I'm sick and tired of the talks of Rex Burkhead. James White is fine in the passing game. But Burkhead, I don't care for him at all. I think Sony Michelle this week against a Lions defense that's given up so many points to the running back position. Let me find this real quick, if we don't mind. Okay, listen to this. The Lions, okay? I mean, they're just basically as bad as the Bills' uh, run-stopping defense. They're just as bad, right? In week one, they gave up 30 points to the running back position in half-point PPR, in which they gave up 100 yards rushing to Isaiah Crowell and two rushing touchdowns to him, right? On 10 carries. So Isaiah Crowell basically just, you know, scorched him. Bilal Powell on 12 carries also had 60 yards, okay? Now in week two, it's the same story, right? Here comes Matt Breed, 138 rushing yards and a touchdown. Alfred Morris, you know, he's just a plunge it up the middle back, 14 carries for 50 yards, no big deal. But I think that Sony Michelle, healthy and ready to, you know, break out, this is the best week for him. He has an opportunity to make his mark upon the league and show that everybody why that the uh, New England Patriots got rid of Deion Lewis and drafted Sony Michelle so early. It's time. I'm excited for him, and it's going to be a great week for Sony Michelle. I've looked through the time stone, okay? I've used the power of the time, so I've looked into the future. Shoney Michelle, uh, Shoney? Sony Michelle is going to have a great week, okay, guys? Start him up, baby. Fire him up. All right, the Soul Stone. Okay. So the Soul Stone, like last week, right? Um, last week was Kenny Galladay. I sacrificed the soul of Marvin Jones, who, you know, rest his soul. He is, um, rest his soul, okay? Eventually he'll become irrelevant. But for now, Kenny Galladay is going to continue to be a beast. And this week, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sacrifice the soul of Chris Carson. For those of you who own Chris Carson, I'm sorry, but it's time to, you know, part ways. Pick up Rashad Penny. Now, why am I saying that Rashad Penny is a hidden gem for this week, week three of the regular season? Well, here's a couple stats, right? This past week on Monday Night Football versus the Bears, Rashad Penny led all running backs with offensive snap percentage with 30%, okay? Chris Carson, yes, CJ Procise, Mike Davis, they're still in that backfield going around. But this coming week, I think, against the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, right? Yeah, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rashad Penny is going to have his breakout game. He is going to be able to put his stamp down on the field and let everybody know it's my time. Nothing of this BS with Chris Carson and Mike Davis playing. I'm the first round pick for a reason. Coming out of San Diego State where I ran for 2,000 yards in a damn season. I don't care anymore. I think Rashad Penny's going to have a good week. For many of you, starting him would be a risk. 
So honestly, you can go ahead, just stash him on your bench if he's sitting on the waivers. If you've got an open spot, go for it. I honestly believe Rashad Penny is going to be able to break out and have a great hidden gem week. Now, the last gem, okay, that I want to mention. All right. Now, I understand what you're thinking. Like you're you're thinking, what am I looking at? Andrew, you just annihilated the Bills. You know, okay, I understand. I get it. I talk shit about the Bills defense, right? But that doesn't mean that the Bills offense is completely inept. I mean, okay, it, it does mean that they're completely inept, okay? But all things considered, the way I see it, Charles Clay this week has a really good potential to be fantasy relevant, okay? He's a guy that I never talk about in my tight end videos. And for good reason, okay? The quarterback's over there. What is it, Josh Allen now? Like, uh, He's not going to be great, but here's the thing. If there is ever going to be a weakness... For the Vikings defense. All right. If there, I mean, listen, there's 60 minutes. You know, we have four quarters, 15 minutes. There's no way that the Vikings hold the Buffalo Bills to under 50 yards. Okay. I think all the 50 yards can go to at least Charles Clay. Okay. Can we at least agree upon that? Right. Now, why would I be considering Charles Clay? In week one, okay, the Vikings defense to George Kittle gave up 90 receiving yards on five receptions. Okay. Now, in week two, to the tight end position again against Jimmy Graham, they gave up 95 receiving yards and six receptions. Now, I understand Charles Clay is not a Jimmy Graham. He's not a George Kittle. I understand that. But I think that with the insight that I've been given, I have been cursed with knowledge, okay, Mr. Stark. And I believe that Charles Clay could have a good sneaky week because of the fact that these tight ends are just ripping up on the Vikings. How? I don't know. They were the best team against the tight end position last year. They've got to, they've got to tighten it up. But as of right now, Charles Clay, he's sneaky. I know he's on your waiver. If you're struggling at the tight end position and you trust the hidden gem experience, if you trust the fantasy gauntlet, yes, it's been here the whole time, people. Okay, I've had it on the whole time. I don't know if you've seen it, but I've had it on the whole time. I am just oozing from the power of the gauntlet, okay? The way I see it, these are my hidden gems of the week. We have Joe Flacco. We have Pierre Garçon. We have Sony Michelle. We have Latavius Murray. We have Rashad Penny. And we have Charles Clay. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed my content, please go down, click the subscribe button. If you have any questions for this week's matchups, who to start, sit, Go to the comment section. I will. I don't have work anymore. It's Friday, okay? I'll be able to answer your questions. I got to catch up a little bit, but I'll get there, okay? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And until next time, tomorrow, I'm, the injury video, it's going to happen tomorrow. So stay tuned. But um, until next time, I'll see you guys. Thank you, guys. You guys are the best.